An Introduction to Integration by Mike Melko. The purpose of this lecture is to introduce you to some fundamental concepts and techniques in integral calculus. It is assumed throughout that you are familiar with the basics of differential calculus, including the product and chain rules for differentiation. You also need to know how to differentiate some basic functions like powers, sine, cosine, exponential, and logarithm. The lecture is divided into four sections. Section 1 is on antiderivatives and indefinite integrals, in which we introduce the inverse operation of differentiation. Section 2 discusses the solution to some simple differential equations. This section illustrates the importance of linearity of the integral, as well as the constant of integration introduced in section 1. Section 3 introduces the two fundamental techniques of integration, integration by parts and integration by substitution. These two techniques help us to integrate many functions. Finally, in section 4 we discuss the relation between antiderivatives and area. This leads to the fundamental theorem of calculus, which will be discussed more fully in another lecture. Section 1 antiderivatives and indefinite integrals. In this section we first define the concepts of antiderivative and indefinite integral. Then we give some basic examples of integration and finally we discuss the integration of linear combinations of functions. A large part of mathematics is about solving equations. This usually entails using a method or algorithm to work backwards from an equation to a solution. Integration is just the inverse process of differentiation and is a necessary step to solving differential equations which define relationships between the derivatives of a function. Many important problems in mathematics, physics, and other branches of science are described in terms of differential equations. With this motivation, we now define what is meant by integration. Suppose that f of x is a continuous function on a closed interval a, b. We say that capital F of x is an antiderivative of f of x if the derivative of capital F of x is equal to f of x. The indefinite integral of f of x is then any antiderivative f of x plus an arbitrary constant c. We call c the constant of integration and f of x the integrand. As can be seen from equation 1, the symbol for integration is an elongated s. The symbol dx is a way of indicating that x is the variable of integration. Historically, the symbol dx is tied to the notion of infinitesimal, and the whole symbol for the integration in equation 1 is tied to area. We do not need to explain this further here, but we'll discuss it briefly in section 4. Note that if we take any antiderivative of f of x and add a constant, we get another antiderivative because the derivative of a constant goes to 0. Thus the indefinite integral of a function is actually a family of functions. It corresponds to all possible antiderivatives to a given function. As we will see in section 2, the constant c is important to solving differential equations. Now let's consider some examples. We know from differential calculus that the derivative of x cubed over 3 is x squared. This implies that the integral of x squared is x cubed over 3 plus c as shown in equation 2. Similarly, we know that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, so the integral of cosine of x is sine of x plus an arbitrary constant c. Recalling that the derivative of the arctangent function, denoted here by tan inverse, is 1 over 1 plus x squared, we find that the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared is tan inverse of x plus c. Finally, the derivative of the natural log of 1 plus x squared is 2x over 1 plus x squared. 
This follows from the fact that the derivative of the natural log of u is 1 over u and an application of the chain rule. Turning this around, we get that the integral of 2x over 1 plus x squared is the natural log of 1 plus x squared plus a constant c. An important property of integration is that it is linear. This means that we can integrate a linear combination of functions term by term. Here, if f of x and g of x are two functions of x, and a and b are two constants, then we say that a times f of x plus b times g of x is a linear combination of f of x and g of x. Equation 6 says that we can pull constants out of the integral and that we can distribute integrals over sums. That is what is meant by linearity. Now let's consider an example that shows why this is useful. Suppose we want to integrate the function 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared. We know from the previous slide how to integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared and 2x over 1 plus x squared. Now we can split 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared into a linear combination of these two functions. Namely, we can write 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared equals 1 over 1 plus x squared plus 1 half of 2x over 1 plus x squared. This is shown in the first line of equation 7. In the second line, we use the linearity property of the integral. To write our integral as a sum of two integrals, we know how to solve. Using the results from equations 4 and 5 of the previous slide, we get line 3 of equation 7 as a final answer. That is, the integral that we seek is arctangent of x plus 1 half the natural log of 1 plus x squared plus a constant c.